Well, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, I just wanted to let you know ahead of time. This probably won't be that long, or well, I'll try to move along as quickly as I can. But it is a study, and uh, so, and it's just going to be the first four chapters. It'll be a study of the first video. So those of you that are genuinely seeking to know and understand the Word of God and come into a, a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I suggest that you go back two or three videos before this one and pick this up at the beginning and follow right on through to bring yourself to this one. Don't just jump in here now, okay, without going through the first part, okay, with me. And so don't, if this thing is about shortcuts for you, you might as well not even begin. Just just go ahead and, and sit it down because you're just a religious scribe or a Pharisee or a wannabe, okay? Th th these are things connected to the heart, the soul, the very essence of the being of the person. We're talking about spiritually peculiar people relative to the rest of the world. So this is not just for everybody, okay, and his brother. Oh, it's been offered to all, to as many as shall come. But as I've said, and as the word has explained to us, not everyone is willing to come into this in the fullness of it. And to the degree of the measure of faith that you've been given, that's fine too. But at least make an effort. Amen? To be honest and genuine, be sincere about your desire. How far into it, how deep we are involved, that part, that's between you and the Father, according to the measure of faith that you've been given. Some are 30-fold, some are 60-fold, and some are 100-fold. This is according to the work and the will of the Father. So I don't want you to feel bad. Oh, geez, I... I just don't see it. I, I don't understand. Well, many of you have not received the baptism of the, of the Holy Spirit, which is about to come upon all of the wheat in this separating of the wheat from the tare in the reality of the world we're in right here, right now. This is that shaking of heaven and earth. This is that gathering the wheat together into the barn. That's the hour of the day that we've come into. Amen? That's where we need to be at. All I'm trying to do is to help those to see the truth of what they've been kept from seeing by the majority. I, I, I tell you ahead of time, the vast majority of the so-called Christian faith is a religious whore. The wheat are in among the tares and they're about to be separated out. But I trust me. <laughs> Amen? This is what you need to come into if you really want to be led by the Spirit of God and to serve your Father in heaven. Amen? So let's go right on into this. I, uh, I believe it was uh, chapter 2, verse 21, I think, uh, where we end it. Okay, mm. uh, prior to that, uh, now when Herod had heard, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, arise, take the young child and his mother. Uh, okay, 21. Then he, then he rose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of, uh, came into the land of Israel. Now this is the coming back out of Egypt, and he's coming back into Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus, Archelaus, was reigning over Judea instead of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go to Judea, okay? Uh, and being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. So again, we see, without any effort on the part of this child obviously okay his very life as you will begin to understand and it's going to unfold
unfold itself to you. His very life, the way he walked, everything pertaining to Jesus, the Messiah of God, was foretold. His very life was an unveiling of the prophetic reality of God being with us. In the presence of Jesus Christ. Uh, which was spoken by the prophets, uh, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now again, here we go. I, I told you I'd mentioned this. Now, one of the remnants that they had gotten from centuries, years ago, uh, thousands of years ago, okay, and they gathered them together and made the Bible, okay? Well, this is where one of the remnants ends. That's why there's such a, a seemingly abrupt move from the end of one remnant now it begins, we're into a new remnant, okay? Another uh, papyrus or scroll that was found, a remnant, uh, which they now place, according to the wisdom of God, okay, in the leading of those men when they put the Bible together. The only thing I've ever told you is that the numbers and the chapters of the numbers, all that numbering of the verses, all of that was never, and it is not part of the actual written Word of God, okay? Because when you start doing that, it becomes a theological study. It's a head knowledge, okay? Uh, a, a, a constant repeating of chapters and verses. So, I don't know. You look good to other people. <laughs> I don't know. That's not what this is about, folks. This is uh, the unveiling of the hearts of men. And I've said this before, by the Spirit of God. So we can come to truly understand who we are, okay, as men, beasts, Okay, uh, wretched man that I am, okay, who shall save me from this body of death? We need to see that. But before we go there, and just I want to encourage you to continue to listen with your hearts. Okay? So, in those days, John the Baptist, this is chapter 3, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent. Uh, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now let me go back over here to my study uh, chart here. Divine intervention. Through dreams and visions. I want to go back through this real quick. He's teaching us to interpret the prophecies and their place in the times and seasons as well as establishing the prophetic truth of Jesus being the Messiah. That's the whole point of these references to the prophecies. Okay, I'm going to repeat that again. The whole point of these prophecies, okay, through the dreams and visions, prophetic prophecies, he's teaching us to interpret the prophecy. Now when we read this, we're learning how... In the Word of God, Jesus is teaching us how to interpret the prophecies that were spoken of old. Okay? And their place in the times and the seasons. So these are like landmarks. We can go back to these prophecies in the Old Testament. And where they're marked at, you can tell at that moment what day and hour they're making reference to. That will help you in understanding the prophecy, the fullness and the rest of the prophecy that's connected to these individual verses. Okay? A lot of what the prophets have to say in their whole prophecies have things to do with other aspects of the future and not particularly pertaining to the Messiah, but in an extension of that for other periods of time, which we need to learn to begin to understand. That's why he directs us to verses. He didn't say that whole prophecy, because if you'll go back and, and to that particular verse and find, the prophecy may have been a, a chapter or two long. Okay? But the, he brings us back to particular verses in the prophecy that designates 
and are designated for a particular time. He's showing us something here. Okay, amen, Jesus? All right. Now I'll go on to where I was talking about John and the remnants. Remember these writings are remnants of the scriptures found that had been written. So many times, so many times, there will be gaps in the end of one remnant and the next one. That begins. Remnants put together in the twelve baskets that have been gathered after the first feeding that begins to establish the faith. Now I want you to see, and I have mentioned to you before, and I will mention to you again, that the entire walk of Jesus in his earthly ministry was a type of that which was to come. And this is part of that type. Those baskets in that feeding of the 5,000, I believe it is, you'll have to double check them, uh, that show that 12 baskets of remnants are gathered, okay, is a picture of what? The remnants being gathered together in the Word of God. It's a type of what took place. Now we have the remnants of those baskets, at least from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay, tied together in the written word, in the basket. Okay. Uh, uh, that have been gathered after the first feeding that begins to establish the faith. This is the establishing of our faith. John is following the prophecy concerning Elijah. And you know, further on, you'll find out that John himself, unaware, unbeknownst to him, because in the sincerity of hearts, being led by the Spirit of God, you don't think in your head, oh, gee, I'm Elijah. You don't think that way. Okay. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even dawn on you who you are Okay, you're just a workman uh, being led by the Spirit of God, and that's what was true of John. John is following the prophecy concerning Elijah, who would uh, come before the appearing of the Lord. What is being um, read and understood by you right now will be used again as we come into the actual establishing of the church in the book of Acts, the Acts of the church. You're going to begin to see the prophetic nature of the very walk, way of which everything concerning the Messiah in his presence was a type and a forthcoming, such as the remnants uh, of his of his house, you know, such as the. Uh, I'm going to have to. Sometimes I write. I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, had not established his house. Oh, let's see, wait a minute. Jesus had not established his house. This statement is present tense as it regarded nat natural Israel, the natural realm and the prophetic concerning that which is about to begin. I'm simply trying to establish that Jesus, in his prophetic ministry, in his walk, in the very nature of who he was, as Manuel, the nature and character of God, uh, each of the uh, gathering together of the feedings, everything relative to what was being done in the natural was a type of what would take place for us spiritually. That's all I'm really trying to say. So let's go on here. Uh, now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. And his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around Jordan went out to him. And were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Now the natural, literal water baptism is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a type of that which would come, and that's why John said, he who comes after me is greater me, and shall baptize you in spirit and fire. 
Now you're going to see that spirit and fire is a two-part issue. The fire is about to come forth. It hasn't come forth. We've been tried and tested, which is the gold, okay, of faith in a furnace of fire, okay, which removes the dross from the gold. That is not, okay, the fire of the Holy Spirit of God that comes and burns the shaft off of the wheat. And this is what John is referring to. He's referring to the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and the perfecter of our faith. It was established by the Spirit of God, and the finished work comes in the fire of the Holy Spirit that burns the shaft up off the wheat in the preparing of the bride. Amen? And the attendants who attend, who enter into the wedding feast of the marriage of the bride and the lamb. Okay, the lamb of God. Okay, so, uh, John himself, okay. Uh, but when they saw many of the uh, Pharisees and Saudis coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now this is where a lot of people start to begin to understand uh, think that, oh, Jesus and the resurrection and everything else uh, has already taken place because it says right here the wrath is to come. No, my brothers and sisters, that's what took was going to take place. That was the point and the purpose of Jesus coming because he had brought the kingdom with him. Had Israel not been faithless and received the Messiah, then that most certainly would have taken place. But they didn't. And they rejected him. And it was because of that rejection and that blinding temporarily of which their branch was broken off that opened up the period of grace that came for the past 2,000 years that we might be grafted into it. So there was a postponing of the wrath of God for the period of grace. And that's what we're coming into right now. The finished work of bring which will bring forth now the wrath of God, because spiritually we're all being gathered into the house. And this wrath, this judgment of God is coming upon the church to burn up the shaft off the wheat and to uh, burn up the wood, hay, and stubble to see what it is that you've placed your faith upon. Rather, it's been upon the rock, the revealed word of the Father, okay, of which Jesus, the cornerstone of the foundation, placed the house upon or is it upon sand the sand okay without a foundation amen therefore bear fruits worthy of the repentance do not think to say yourselves we have Abraham uh, as our father for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones now again we have the stones and I'm, I'm sharing with you that the stones are rising up. They're being gathered together in the net. Okay. And even now the ash is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His renowning fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the shaft with unquestionable fire. John is prophesizing. John is a prophet. He is prophesizing of what is going to take place, not right then and there, other than for the Lord coming to the uh, marketplace in and around the temple, okay, and chasing the uh, people out there uh, selling, uh, uh, turning into his father's house. And other than that, that was all that took place in regards to Jesus being wrathful and the father being wrathful. Now, 70 years later, that temple was destroyed as a result of their rejecting the Messiah but it had absolutely nothing to do with the resurrection. There was a first fruits resurrection, which I've shared in other videos, and that's not what I'm sharing with 
the wheat right now. I'm trying to bring the wheat into something other than what they've been given up to this point to give them a little better understanding. So let me back off a little bit on this, but I simply want to show you that Jesus' house has not been established yet. The foundation was laid in the Alpha, but the house has not been built. He cannot come with a renowning for, okay, fan in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his fleshing floor, his threshing floor. This is the church that Jesus established. The faith, the households of faith that are about to be judged by the threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, which is about to take place. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. John is prophesizing of this period of time. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said, Permit it to be so now, for, th for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. People get confused between the law and the righteousness of the law, because they don't understand the difference. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, uh, alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, Now who, folks, is in the heavens speaking? Those that believe Jesus is God. Suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. Who's saying that from the heaven about Jesus standing on the earth? God the Father. This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward he was hungry I want to help you to understand that this happened after the baptism of the Holy Spirit the anointing upon the natural man okay because in himself the inner man he was born with the inner man he already had that Spirit of God dwelt richly in him. Okay? These are the two men being made one. The inner man and the outer man. Now the outer man, okay, of whom the Father is well pleased, is receiving the anointing in the natural realm, according to the order of Melchizedek, as the high priest of that order. I suppose I'm adding a little more on the end uh, because I'm, I'm hoping that some of the, the so-called brethren or brethren, amen, Jesus, who view this channel, amen, who may have already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, might still be able to, you know, glean some <laughs> fruit from the vine, amen? This is what breaking the bread between the brethren is all about. And you guys got a lot to share with me, too. I wish you'd just start doing it on the comments. <laughs> what the Father revealed to you, Amen, Jesus? Okay. Uh, then we go through the temptation of the Lord, and like I said, this happens after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You guys that get holier than thou after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've just begun. Work's just begun. You're going to get tempted now by all these things, and most of you fall short of it. You don't continue on to know the Lord. So those souls that have received the baptism, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help the weak who have yet to have received the baptism who are about to receive that baptism. Amen, Jesus. Because it was promised to them that they received it. Uh, so for today, I'm going to go over this real quick. Uh, did we, uh, Jesus begins... Um, 
Uh, there are some more prophetic things. I think in the study aspect of this, we're going to stop at chapter 4. We're not going to go chapter 5 through, uh, through chapter 4. We're going to finish at chapter 4 right now. So I'll keep that at mark. Mark down here so I know where we went at. We finished, we're at, we finished the first three chapters. Because I need to go over them, and I haven't, because I can tell I, I ran out of uh, study. So I haven't gone any further, and I'm not going to share anymore. Amen? Well, now I'll go back through here and go over it again, and allow the Holy Spirit to lead me and help me to understand things that I might be able to share with the wheat that are in here. Okay? So we're doing a study. Amen, <laughs> Jesus. I love you guys. The Lord be with you and blessing Yeshua's name. Amen? Amen.